welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know though is that hopefully you're watching me in black and white. Hopefully. Because this is another collab with a huge group of people which I just love doing. Uh, and this time it's part of the same group that did the Halloween in July and the musician inspired collab but we've also got a few newbies in there as well and we have people being added every day so rather than tell you who's in it I'm just going to direct you to the playlist once you finish watching this because this is a gemstone inspired collab the only rule is you choose your favourite gemstone, doesn't have to be your birthstone, and create a look based around the colours of that particular stone. So, if you want to find out exactly which stone I have chosen, rude. If you want to know exactly which stone I have chosen, and what this looks like in glorious technique, and then my friend, you, you are in a precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right. You will have seen from the intro that this is a collaboration. So hopefully the intro is in black and white. Hopefully I remember to do that. Now, although this is a collaboration, I am a teaching channel. So partly because my chronic pain means that I cannot blend very quickly anymore. But also because I felt it was something that was missing from YouTube. Um, I wanted to create a channel where complete beginners could still follow step by step so I come in very close to the eyes when I'm doing the eye look and I basically walk you through it step by step, it's all done in real time, all the blending's done in real time, nothing's cut out. So if you blend quicker than me or you just don't have that much time, up here somewhere is a speed widget. Please feel free to use it because, sweetie, it really won't offend me because unless you tell me, I won't know. Okay? It can be your little secret. Right. Faces washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. And today I went in with a bit of this e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer in shade... Universal Sheer, which is meant to be a dupe for the Tarcha, but I am not bougie enough to be able to afford Tarcha, so I'm going to give that a go, see what it's like, and obviously I've got my antiperspirant primer over the top, because otherwise, well, the makeup won't stay on my face for very long. Details of that are in the description box. Right. On my eyes, I've used my usual primer. Um, the one that I always use, ever since I first got it, it's this Crow and Pebble primer. I've got shade Cotton, which is pure white. As you can see, they do it in six different shades. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there's three skin tone shades in between those two and that white one. Again, details of that in the description box. Check the description box and you'll find many, many things. Many, many, many things. Now, I just want to talk you through eye shapes because I've got deep set eyes and for a long time I was under the impression that I had hooded lids because I have the same issue. I get transference of shimmers onto the upper lid. If I was cutting my crease I couldn't just cut the socket, I had to go onto the upper lid. And even when I use glitter glues right through the crease here, I'd always get a bare patch. However, what I've got are deep set eyes. 
rather than hooded eyes and a lot of people get confused between the two. So I'm going to talk you through the differences and uh, give you a tip for each different eye as to how you can follow any tutorial you follow on YouTube. If you've watched me a lot and you know what I'm going to say, just zoom forward until you see some colour and, and then that'll be fine. Now, with my brows relaxed, <coughs> excuse me, with my brows relaxed, looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded lids. It's only if your static lid completely covers right down to your lash line all or part of your mobile lid that you have a hooded eye, either a full or a half hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I have deep set eyes. If I cover my mobile lid this side and close my eye, you can see I've got as much space again that tucks back away. And if I cover the static lid and do the same thing, I've got about a brush handle width there as well. And those two bits of skin that fold back in, rub together. That's why I get the same issue that hooded eyed people have. Now, if you have hooded lids, get something like this or a fine pencil brush and sketch out on your static lid where you want your crease to fall. Now, obviously, it's going to reduce the space between your crease and your brow. So just use smaller brushes than the person doing the tutorial and you'll be absolutely fine. Chaps, chapesses and non-denominational personages who have deep set eyes, sometimes referred to as double lidded eyes, what we have to do is when we're blending through our crease just so sit back, relax our brows and just make sure we've come up high enough that it's visible just above the crease line there. That simple, but obviously two very different ways of dealing with the same issue. Now, um, I will have told you this in the intro, but this is a gemstone inspired collab. It features some of the people from uh, the Sweet 16 group where we did Halloween in July and we did the musician inspired look. Not everybody from that group could fit this gemstone collab in. So we've made like a little separate kind of breakaway group. We're still part of the main group, but to make it easier and to not clog up the group chat, we opened up a new group, group chat, um, to discuss all the issues and everything and all the guidelines for the, the, the collab itself. Now, the day the collab goes up, it's going to be posted at all different times of the day depending on where people are in the world. There's, they're not all going to go up at the same time. However, they will all be in the same playlist. So um, you can always just check back on that playlist and see what's new that you haven't already seen before. The guidelines are we are doing a gemstone inspired look. It does not have to be your birthstone. And that's it. That's the only rule. So, because I love, 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 my birthstone, which is an emerald, and because I have this that's arrived, the Layla 2 from Blush Tribe, which is full of beautiful greens and kind of peridot, and mm -hmm, I wanted to use this. And I'm also grabbing my Oh My Glitter Get Sprung palette. If you watched my um, Persephone inspired spring look that I did, I used this palette. And these are all satins. Whereas I believe the layer 2 is all matte. No, nope, there's one shimmer. Two shimmers. Well, two satins. Three satins. <laughs> there's three satins in this. And this is all satin. So let's get started. I really wasn't going to buy this, and then Blush Tribe had a, I think it was a 30% off code, and I just couldn't resist. <laughs> I do have a discount code for Blush Tribe. There's loads of discount codes floating around. It's non affiliated, I don't earn from it, but if you save money, fabulous. Um, I've only had that code very recently. I had already bought 
a number of their palettes prior to getting the code and a number of their loose pigments prior to getting the code. So I'm not just telling you about them because I've got a code, in case you're wondering. Because I know I've heard I've heard people floating around whinging about people always promoting blush drive. It's like the it's like the smaller channels version of Morphe. No, it's not. Because we don't earn from it. And smaller channels, if we don't like something, we're gonna tell you. Okay? Thanks. Right. I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna this is a Jeffrey brush. Jeffrey Morphe JS8. It is clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to start off by going into Maria, there's something about Maria. Sorry. <laughs> okay, quite powdery, so tap back off well. That's the code for people that are fast forwarding. Time to start playing. Now what I love about this Chrome Pebble Primer is you don't have to set it, but it's not sticky. So you can just go straight in. And start blending straight away which is a little bit awesome now this is a super super pale shade and I am super super pale but I just want this at the top to sort of show that you know when the light shines through an emerald you do get some beautiful light green flashes but I will be going over this with some deeper greens as well I mean the traditional emerald colour is very very difficult to find now um, the traditional sort of emerald shade is, is like this you can find them but now they're all cloudy they're all opaque rather than being um, a clear stone. The older emeralds are clear stones. Nowadays, if you get a clear emerald that's that shade, it's usually been uh, created in a lab somewhere. Um, or it's a lighter green that's been dyed deeper. Uh, most emeralds that you see now are cloudy. But I was lucky enough to inherit my mother-in-law's mother's, mother's uh, ring when she passed away a few years ago, which has got a 1920s emerald in it, and it's stunning. I don't wear it very often because it's it's in 24 karat gold ring, which is very very soft gold, and where I grip the steering wheel so tightly, I've got a very strong grip. Um, it, it starts to bend the metal, so I only really wear it on very special occasions. So that's safely tucked away somewhere. Right. You can see that's actually built up and blended out quite nicely. Right, I'm now going to go... Oh, there's a shade here called Sarah. I have to use that because that's my sister-in-law's name. Beautiful colour. Oh, I'm just going to... Come in with a bit of that through here. Still using the same brush. I didn't bother to clean the brush off because I'm still going in with a green, just a darker version. And I'm just going to blend this through. I'm doing circular movements, as you can see, coming across into the nose and then reversing the direction when I come back out again. Um, it just helps to gently move your lid around. I always hold the brush at the end so I put as little pressure on the lid as possible. But it just helps to move the skin around a bit to make sure you don't get any white patches left. I do this side where I've got these super deep creases here, you can see. Um, I do have to do something a bit different that side because the circular, this sort of movement doesn't always um, eliminate all the white tiger striping or barcoding that you can get. But what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just building up this colour which is really pretty and you can see they're blending together really nicely as well oh I like that I do like that a lot so the gemstone club I'm not going to list everybody mainly because we've got 
new people coming in almost on a daily basis at the moment. So I don't want to give you the list of people that are in it now. And then if we have more people join in, um, them not being mentioned. I would absolutely hope to do that. I would hope for anybody to feel um, that I'd left them out. So what I'm going to do, there'll be a link to the playlist in my description box. And you'll be able to find all of the films in there. As I said, they're all going to be going up at different times of the day. And we're all around the world from... New Zealand, Australia, through Europe, America, Canada, we're, we're all over basically. So if you wanted to, you could always do it and watch all of these tomorrow when everybody's film is going to be up or you can just dip into the playlist, leave it open on a tab on your phone or something and just Every couple of hours, just refresh the playlist and see if there's anything new that you haven't already watched. Because I believe with the playlists, the most recently added is at the top of the list, I believe. I'm just sitting back and checking that these look the same because obviously, unlike James Charles, I don't Photoshop my eyes so they're not symmetrical. Yes, that was shade. Do I care? No. Sorry, I have very little time for that boy. Career built on a lie. I hate that. How can he trust anything he says when he says he likes a palette when his whole career is built on a pack of lies? Yeah, you can see I've got a little bit of barcoding there. So I'm just going to have to... Uh, Gently stretch my lid out. Do not do this if you don't have to, otherwise you will end up with deep creasing. This is from when my eye was pulled around when I was five years old. I'm now 45. Mm. So, shh, rude. <sighs> don't people know this is important? I'm talking to you for goodness sake. So, yeah. Okay, I like that. And I'm going to clean this brush off. As you can see, now stained with the green. But I will be washing them off at the weekend like I always do. So, no worries on that respect. Right, going in with another one of the Jeffrey brushes. This is JS12. Again, clean but stained. And I'm going to go in with Mary Ann, which is the true emerald shade that I mentioned earlier. And I'm just going to run that through the crease. And bring it up. And kind of sweep it up into a point almost. I'll tidy the edge up later when I'm um, just before I put any foundation on. I'll go in with a micellar wipe and just sort of straighten that edge out a little bit. But I just wanted to have like a whoosh, because I've been struggling recently with um, my fibro has been making my eyes very watery and this has been a year when I've been affected all year with the pollen. It started in March with the grass pollen and the tree pollen. Continued through the summer with all the sort of flower pollen and now here we are September I'm struggling with tree and grass pollen again. So yeah, I've, I've proper struggled this year. Um, so to add that to already watery eyes because of fibro, I found it very, very difficult to get any liners to actually stay in place. So what I've been doing is instead of using the liner to 
give me an elongated cat eye shape. I'm actually using the uh, eyeshadow instead, which actually is, is it's quite nice. It gives a kind of a softer look, but it still gives you that drama that you need or that you're looking for with a wing. I've got dry patches here and here and that's why that's clinging on just there. If you get that, if you just sort of rub it with the warmth of your finger it will normally disperse it a bit. Right. In the brush, grab my micellar wipe and just tidy the edge up before I go any further. I always get more fallout this side because the eyelid is looser. I it was pulled around so much when I was a kid. I didn't really notice any difference in the tension of my eyelids. Um, until about three years ago ish. I think it was about sort of 41, 42 when I first started to notice it, it was an issue. Um, so it took a long time to come out, but it does show you that even damaged that long ago. Right, I'm going into my Oh My Glitter Get Sprung palette. And I'm going to go into. Hmm. I'm going to go into Forest Walks, which is quite an olivey green. And I'm literally just going to run that through the crease, just to deepen that up a fraction. Well, I think I need to go deeper than that even. I'm going to go into Fairy Moss. And run this through. Yeah, that's better. Run this through the crease instead. Now with shimmers, you can blend them. If you use a blending brush rather than a packing brush, and blend them. You will get some fallout from it because what you'll end up doing is you'll be blending off the shimmer particles but what you should find is that the base colour remains as you can see from there. I'm just going to bring that down onto the lid a fraction can't see what I'm doing because obviously I've closed the eye that I see with. I'm relying on muscle memory, hoping I'm still in frame and in focus. Yeah, hey, look at that. Right, I'm do the same thing this side. I'm fairly lost through. Give her a bit of a blend. I love the Oh My Glitter formula. I've uh, been buying from her for absolutely ages, from before she did palettes, even when she just did uh, individual shadows. Uh, she actually named her lipstick after me, which was lovely. One that I'd been bugging her to create. It was um, a purple with silver shimmers in it. So she made it and she called it more malicious after me, which I thought was lovely. Really sweet of her. Mind you, I am trying to get her to make it into a bullet lipstick now. Because I'm going through a bullet lipstick phase. So again, just... Build that up on the corner there. Doesn't seem to want to build this side. I think it's because of that dry patch just there. 
So I'm going to just grab a different brush and go in with that instead. Let's go in with a nice pencil brush. Oh, this is a Morphe MB27. Just needed a slightly denser brush. Where well, I've got a dry patch on the outside of that eye at the moment. Fantastic. Again, grab my micella water. You will get fallout if you are blending a satin. There's no way around that, I'm afraid. Okay, I need to get a different pad and some nice water. Because that was just spreading it and I'm starting to look like poison ivy. Poison ivy. Poison ivy. Oh yeah, if you're new to my channel, uh, being half Welsh, I very often end up warbling a little bit. Warbling and waffling, basically. Apparently that can be quite endearing though, so I'm told by my regular viewers. They could just be being nice, of course, but uh, okay. Let us continue. Right, I'm going to grab. Actually, this is another Morphe brush. This is a Morphe M three two one. No, I'm not a Morphe Shield, and I'm not an affiliate at all. And I am going to go in with a shade called Freshly Cut and try and minimise the fallout. I'm actually going to wet, I've packed the pigment on and I'm just going to wet it with some setting spray. Never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. You'll end up creating a hard pan and it will end up going down and ruining the whole shadow. I'm going to pop this onto the two thirds of the lid that haven't had any love yet. I think you can see. That's pretty stunning. This was in um, this particular palette was in one of the mystery boxes that she did uh, earlier this year, the April one I believe it was. Was it last year? Might have even been last year. I'm um, just going to dry the brush off and then go back in and do the same on the other eye. She's got um she's got some October boxes coming up. So if you've uh, if there's still some available, definitely worth getting. I think the April mystery box I got this palette, uh, purple gel liner, loose gold pigment, a bronzy liquid lipstick. And my two flower crowns that you very often see me wearing. Now with this eye, because of that deep creasing, I do have to stretch the lid out, otherwise the shimmer just packs in loosely rather than being actually blended on. And as I move my eye through the day, I get cascades of it coming down my cheek, which not the prettiest look in the world. 
I mean, if you want multicoloured freckles to generally increase throughout the day just on one cheek, then, you know, you do you, boo. But it's not quite the effect I'm going for today. Okay. Right, I like that. I like that a lot. Right, I'm going to pause you while I put some foundation etc on and I'll be back to finish this eye look off with you. So, you will see me instantly. I will see you the very next time I press the record button. So please don't go anywhere. I am back. As you can see, I decided to do green brows. Now, I don't actually have a green pomade at present uh, so I got creative and I mixed some Colourpop Punch Cream Gel Liner with some Revolution Pigment Pomade in Ocean Blue. And that has given me this rather attractive green, which is not too dissimilar to the colour I was gaming for, which is good on me for getting that combination just about right. Right, I'm going to go in with this flat top brush that you saw earlier. And I'm going to go into Fairy Moss from the Get Sprung palette. Join it up with the bit there and just run it very gently along under my lower lash line. I'm so looking forward to seeing what um, everyone else has chosen. I really hope someone's chosen something like an opal or a moonstone, which has got you know a myriad of colours through it. I just wanted to really go properly green with it today, but then you've probably realised that. Right, to clean this brush off, and now this brush is, believe it or not, it's the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Cream Palette. Uh, I love it because it's flat at the top but it's chunky so it's great for getting up under the lashes and great for blending out. And I'm going to go into the Get Sprung palette and I'm going to go into Carnation which is that shade of green and just gently buff along the lower lash line just to soften that line a little bit and to add a little bit more interest in terms of colour. This is so pretty. I do love this palette. I use it an awful lot actually when I'm not filming. I've used it a couple of times on film, but obviously I've got a lot of different palettes that I want to show you and show off kind of thing and demonstrate. But this is absolutely one of my most reached for palettes. Okay. Pretty, 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 pretty. Now this, believe it or not, is an old lip brush that I bought from eBay probably a decade ago. And I've got one of these super shock cheek things from Colourpop. And this one is in shade Perilune, which has got a green tinge to it. And despite being a cream, if you're careful with it, you can actually put it on over powder. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of that on the tail of the brow. 
both sides. And then in a corner, I like to bring it under my tear duct and just sort of blend it and fade it into the other colours that I've got going under the eye. You don't have to do that, you can just do in a corner like that and just leave it like that but with my shape eye I just think it looks nicer when I bring it along like so right I'm going to pause you one last time while I put some more of this highlighter everywhere put some mascara on choose a lippy and I will be back with my final look so I'll see you well, right now really I am back. Obviously I use the same highlighter. The mascara was, as usual, my Catrice Glamondal Waterproof Volume Mascara. This is an absolute dupe for Benefit's Bad Girl Bang, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. Although I understand that Bad Girl Bang have now bought out a waterproof version. The lipstick is a Jeffrey. This is Area 51 from, I believe, the holiday set last year, so 2018. But I just thought it's the perfect green to complement this look. So this is my gemstone-inspired look. What do you think? Have I represented the Emerald family sufficiently? Actually, believe it or not, I've actually got green dye in my hair on the glitter hairs. Um, I put a, one of these wash in, wash out colours in. And this is UV reflective. Which was awesome. And then the event I went to, they didn't have a UV light. And I'm like, oh, that was worth it then, wasn't it? <laughs> so I've even got a green tinge to my hair. Right. If you're one of my regular viewers, please double check you're still subscribed because people are still getting unsubscribed at a rate of knots. The other day I gained five new subscribers from a collab that I'd done and they all told me in the comments box that they had subscribed to me. Within hours, three older subscribers had been removed. The next day I lost another one. So although I gained five subscribers from the collab, I only actually ended up gaining one because four older subscribers were unsubscribed. Uh, presumably against their will. Uh, because there was nothing in the collab that could possibly have offended them. It's someone I've collabed with before, so it wasn't a controversial brand. So I genuinely have no idea what YouTube are doing right now, but they're not being helpful to smaller creators. So, once you've checked you're subscribed, check your notification bell is run and check you've got all notifications chosen, please do go across and check out the playlist that is linked below so that you can see everybody else's contribution to this gemstone inspired collab. I actually really like this look and I am going to go and when I pick my husband up from work, I think we've got to go and do some food shopping. So I'm going to be rocking this look around the supermarket, blending in by the cucumbers. Why did I say cucumbers? Uh, I'm sure a psychiatrist will make something completely lewd out of that. I just happen to like cucumber. Cucumber sandwiches? Lush. Why have I got any cucumber in the fridge? Mm. Okay. If you're new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I am ever so slightly scatty. Uh, I'm a half Welsh, half Yorkshire bird who lives in the south of England. And I witter and waffle and warble like nobody's business. But I have been told my voice is soothing and that I can actually be found quite amusing. If you've made it this far through the film, I'm guessing you liked it just a little bit. So it would be awesome if you too could hit that subscribe button while it's still free. Because let's face it, who knows what YouTube are going to do. 
uh, turn it from red to grey. Ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications so that you get told every time that I upload another one of these films. Talking of another one of these films, once you finish watching all of the other collabby films, I've got an awful lot of different films that you can choose from and play catch up with, and I'm sure there'll be something there that will interest you. Right, that's quite enough for me for one day. You've got an awful lot of other films to go and watch. So, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.